You are now listening to the homily of Father Francis Lynch, parish priest of St. Mary's Church in Chiselhurst, UK. This service is provided by the Lexio Divina team, part of the LOV Verbum Day Ministry, who invites you all to share this reflection and their love for the Word of God. The Gospel is the good news of salvation for mankind that salvation is only through Jesus Christ, as Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. And firstly, I'd like to start with a greeting to the LOV, Urban Day family um, and those who are interested in looking at the gospel, looking at evangelization and looking at the teachings of the church. Today um, the gospel is about St John the Baptist and um, the feeling of expectancy and that's a good Advent theme and maybe I should have gone with that but today I'm actually going with the psalm which is Psalm 12 and <clears throat> um, verses 2 to 6. And I'm just going to read out verse 2. Truly, God is my salvation. I trust I shall not fear, for the Lord is my strength, my song. And I chose this partly because the words, do not be afraid, which don't occur in the psalm as such, but it does say, I shall not fear, which is also responding to that. Um, because those words, do not be afraid, they turn up so often in the Bible. They turn up um, in Advent. They turn up with the angel's message to Our Lady. In fact, I think the first thing he says to her is, um, fear not, do not be afraid, because I bring you um, counsel or news of great joy. So what does, um, why does, why does the Bible, why does God speak to his people saying, do not be afraid quite so often? And why should we be afraid? And why should we not be afraid in that case? Now, the reasons for being afraid are many and various, and I'll just go through some of them. One is that we're afraid um, of things that attack us. We're afraid of the things of the outside world, which are a problem or a danger to us. Many, many times children are told, um, look out for this. Do not do this. Do not go there. This is dangerous. This should be avoided. And I remember from my own childhood, I remember being on um, going down to the seaside and being told that breakers were very dangerous and we had to avoid them. And I had no idea what breakers were. And I think almost all children come across this, especially when they're very young. They're told to avoid something and they're told it's dangerous and they don't know what it is. Um, and it's true, there are dangers that we know what they are and consequently it's, we sort of can avoid them. There are those dangers that we know what they are, and it seems that we can't avoid them. And then there are those dangers that we sort of know what they are, and we don't know how to avoid them, and dangers that we know are there, um, but we can't specify them very much, and we don't know how to avoid them. So those are dangers that come from outside, and they assail us all the time. It's part of our consciousness as human beings that we are aware of danger before it comes, we have it in the back of our mind. So that's one thing. Then there's the danger, um, which is where we put ourselves into danger of sorts. Um, and the danger that we put ourselves into might be because we're seeking thrills, we're seeking excitement, but we might be because we're trying to better ourselves. And allied to this is the meeting between God and man. And when it says, do not be afraid in the Bible, I think it normally means um, you are in the presence of something terrible. Uh, you're in the presence of something awesome. You're in the presence of something so great and so sublime that the only sensible response, and indeed the only actual response, is normally fear and trembling. In the... Um, <clears throat> In the um, introit for the mass for the dedication of the church, it 
quotes from the Bible, and it says, terribly is, est um, locus iste. This is a terrible, this is a terrifying place. And this is the house of God. This is the door to heaven. And with many people, especially children, who have been brought up with a fairly mild concept of religion, um, you think, well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Um, but the Old Testament mind, that was a terrifying thing, to think that you were near or in the presence of the um, all-conquering, all-knowing, all-powerful God. This is a terrifying thing. So when the angel comes to Mary, the first thing he has to say to her is, do not be afraid, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. You are in the presence of God because the angel is the presence of God. The angel is a messenger of God. The angel is God's way of speaking to his people. He is there present in the angel when he sends him. Um, so what does this have to do with us? Um, and I think one of the things that we should really concentrate on during Advent is being aware of the presence of God. And we can be aware of it as a loving presence, as a caressing presence, as God is there, as it were, like us stroking our cat. So, so God is stroking us and making us feel at home, um, just, um, just touching with his fingers so that we know that we're in the presence of God and we're touched by God. And that's good. But we also should be aware that God is the very source of our being and that he is a terrifying presence. He is an awesome presence. And one of the most natural things is to stand in awe at his presence. And from time to time during Advent, as well as remembering him as the loving father, as well as remembering him as the comforter, we should always remember him as this huge force which directs the whole of the universe, which directs every power in the universe, which just by thinking, just by the, uh, just a tiny shadow of thought could destroy the whole of the universe. And this is the presence in which we are, a presence which loves us, but which also judges us. And both of those things we should be, be aware of, especially in the season of Advent. Do not be afraid, but think first that you should have something to be afraid of. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lectio Divina teams hope that this homily has helped you to deeply welcome the Word of God and give you the strength to put the Word into practice where you are. You can send us your prayer intentions by emailing them to us using the following email address l.o.v underscore verbum die at outlook.com the Tuesday and Wednesday prayer groups gathering respectively are at 7 p.m. and 6 p.m. UK time. We'll pray particularly for this prayer. In if this homily has enlightened or touched you in any way, please share it with your relatives, friends, community and on your social media. Have a blessed week.